Hi, my name is Ron James, and I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the Center for Ethical Business Cultures at the Opus College of Business and the University of St. Thomas to another in a series of ethical insights. Today, our guest in the studio is Jules Polonetsky. Jules is the executive director and co-chair of an organization that focuses on privacy and how data is consumed. He's in town to uh, keynote a special conference that the center is hosting looking at big data and privacy. Jules, welcome. We're glad you're here today. Thank you. Exciting to be here. Beautiful town and the center is doing some really exciting work. Uh, thanks so much. Well, maybe we can start with the basics. Can you tell us a little bit about what is big data, please? You know, it depends who you ask. Um, to researchers and uh, uh, scientists, uh, big data uh, means um, uh, lots of data. Um, people talk about the three V's, velocity and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, new abilities to process and use algorithms that will uh, yield insights. But to some privacy advocates, uh, big data means uh, big dangers. Data being used to discriminate, um, to uh, enhance biases, um, to keep people from certain benefits, or maybe just to market to them in some aggressive way that uh, is unappealing. So it really focuses on the organization and how it collects and uses the data, but what are the rights of the individuals? Is that fair? You know, we've always had a lot of data, uh -huh. right? Um, uh, and certainly today with uh, social media data about us out there, uh, with the Internet of Things, all the uh, technology we use leaving a, a trail, um, with um, giant data centers that can manage more data than ever, uh, with app developers who can have 20 million users all of a sudden, uh, but could have access to your contacts, your location. Um, <clears throat> the optimists among us uh, look at this and say, we can cure diseases if we can look at 30 years of people's uh, health information, or if we can track everywhere you've been and then correlate that with illnesses. Who knows what insights uh, and uh, what great new breakthroughs we'll make, but we need as much data as possible to do that because if we have vast amounts, there may be correlations that uh, would have been invisible before that now first start showing us uh, a signal. To the privacy critic, capturing as much data as you can about me or about a whole population uh, means such risks. Um, uh, will the data be breached? Um, what control do I have over it if you've just told me that you need all of my data all the time? Um, uh, I've just lost some autonomy. Who, who's making decisions about me? Uh, and so uh, we're at this point where uh, ethical discussions about what rights do I have? Can I tell you not to have this data? Mm -hmm. uh, well, some of it you need. You, you can't, uh, can't get health care unless somebody has data. Yep. Uh, I can't go through school without leaving information uh, in grades and, and a disciplinary record, and uh, right? Um, but what are the secondary uses? What are the new things you want to do with that data? Um, and do I have any right to tell you not to do those things if, um, if it makes you more efficient, if it makes you improve your process, if it means you can come up with insights that uh, improve the environment? That's the real ethical challenge. Got it. Uh, so what are some of the challenges that big data present? You were talking about privacy. What are some of the challenges, please, Jules? Traditionally, privacy laws around the world focus on what are known as fair information principles. Uh, you tell people what data is collected. You minimize what you collect. Uh, you specify what you're going to do with it. Um, you only collect what you need. <laughs> all of those themes conflict with what we just talked about, the idea that I need all the data uh, I can't possibly tell you what I'm going to do with it because I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to collect it because I might learn something new and have some new invention tomorrow. And so we have this pressure now between um, laws around the world, uh, between what are considered uh, responsible principles for data around the world, uh, and what businesses or researchers or academics or governments uh, want to do. And so we're at loggerheads. And that those laws may vary as you go around the world then. Different cultures have different views. Yeah. Europe's got a much stricter privacy structure in place. Um, in the US, we're enthusiasts of innovation. Um, unless it harms somebody, it's usually legal. Uh, in Europe or some other cultures, 
you don't do it unless you have permission to do it. And you know, you see the difference sometimes in the output at the end of the day in terms of innovation, uh, and increasingly privacy and innovation are, are uh, considered um, areas that bump into each other. Okay. So how are organizations wrestling with uh, how to use this data? What are some of the emerging practices and risks that you've seen? Some organizations are using the old ways. Um, uh, how do we deal with squeezing the traditional privacy principles uh, of notice and choice and access and so forth over all this data? Uh, others are finding it a real challenge because they, they've got um, uh, business people or researchers coming to them and saying, I need to keep it for a long time. I can't deal with data minimization. So increasingly, this is becoming a discussion of ethics. Um, is what I want to do here good for the individual? Is it good for all the users of our product? Uh, would people be harmed by it? Would they be creeped out by it? Would they be, uh, is there something um, immoral about it? Um, and that is increasingly a better frame than um, don't collect it or throw it out. Um, I may need to collect it. Now the question is, am I a trusted uh, custodian of this data? And am I using it in a way that benefits you, that benefits the world, that increases autonomy, or am I using it in ways that are likely to be harmful? So they're balancing sort of the benefits with the risk associated and with And how it. do you balance a benefit? Yeah. Um, you know, compliance professionals, uh, risk experts, are pretty good at identifying risks. What's a benefit that I can market better to you? Um, well, to some business that might be a benefit, but to some individual, well, that's not a benefit to me. Um, others say, well, We've got a better efficient society if there's effective marketing, lowers prices, uh, you know, opens up access to all, uh, you know, all efficiencies. And so evaluating benefit is really one of the thresholds that we've got to really work on. Um, what does it mean to assess a benefit? And then how do I do a benefit risk analysis? Yeah. We've seen this in other areas, but it's somewhat new um, to the privacy equation. Yes. Okay, you were, Jules, you were talking about this tension between sort of the organizational and benefits that they see, but how does it benefit the individual and what are the clashes with the individual's rights? Who gets to decide what are the rules of engagement? You know, that's the million dollar question. In some countries, regulators say we get to decide whether or not it's okay to use data in some uh, manner. Um, in many companies, um, we see models like a chief privacy officer, a chief ethics officer, a, a regulatory person. Uh, you can imagine the chief marketing officer perhaps having a different view as to whether some use of data is really good for the world uh, than uh, perhaps a, a chief risk officer. Uh, and so companies are trying to figure out how do I set up a, a model uh, perhaps something akin to what the academic world has used where we've got institutional review boards who assess is this an experiment that's going to harm people? Um, do you have to get consent? Um, what, what are the, uh, who are the viewpoints that should be involved in making this, this decision? And so we're increasingly seeing companies uh, thinking about setting up panels. Google uh, now in Europe uh, has a, a mandate from the Supreme Court uh, in, uh, in Europe uh, to delete information that people don't like. Uh, and they've put up an outside panel that it's going to provide uh, advice and expertise and they've got um, academics and they've got experts of various sorts. Uh, how can a company make sure that it's got an appropriate sounding board? Mm -hmm. Is it a more powerful chief privacy officer? Um, what should those shapes look like? That's one of the important challenges I think as privacy and uh, ethical review and social responsibility start to converge. Well, Jews, what advice, counsel would you give an organization that's wrestling with this dilemma, these tensions? For a very long time, companies dealt with privacy by giving it to their legal counsel and asking him or her to write a privacy policy, uh, and then they moved on. Uh, today, data is a core business asset. Your customer relationship is a strategic part of your company's future, and data is part of that. And so if you consider your customer relationship and your data relationship a core part of your company, um, then the, the time, attention, and expertise you put to it is very different than a compliance thing where I've got to fill out some forms and make sure I mine my P's and Q's. And so recognizing that privacy isn't just compliance, it's literally a business imperative, uh, it's your profit, it's your trust, um, and how you use your data uh, can uh, either ensure that you compete effectively in this new economy uh, or that you're hamstrung. And so um, the key uh, issue is more than um, uh, 
being careful about limiting data use. It's minding the P's and Q's about data use, but treating it like it's a core part of your business strategy. Thank you so much, Jules. Our guest has been Jules Polonetsky. Jules is Executive Director of the Future of Privacy Forum, a Washington, D.C.-based think tank really examining some of the leading issues around privacy. Thanks so much for being with us. Great to be here. And thank you for joining us for yet another in a series of ethical insights brought to you by the Center for Ethical Business Cultures and the Opus College of Business at the University of St. Thomas. Have a great day.